Hi guys, Prime here. Today we're going to be going over some mythological creatures that are in Assassin's Creed Origins, their backstories and all of that good stuff. Well, I suppose they're mythological stories, but some of the beasts we're going to talk about here you can fight during the Daughters of Artemis questline, but they don't have any special cutscenes and might not be given the justice you'd expect or want, whilst others are more significant to the story in some way and have a bit more complexity to their encounters and, above all, have cutscenes. Also, just as a heads up, I'll go over spoilers for the game, so if that's not your thing, well, I warned you. You want me to kill a pig? This is no ordinary boar. Starting us off here, we have the Crocotus hyena. Now, in the game itself, you get introduced to this hyena by following the Daughters of Artemis questline. In Greek mythology, though, the Crocotus hyena had many different names, and it was a mythological cross between a wolf and a dog, or a hyena and a lion, or a stag and a lion. But in some way or another, it was linked to hyenas, or early historical accounts of hyenas. It was known to be a bisexual creature, and could produce young without the need of a partner. Also, the female version of the species is very rare, at least never caught in the myths. Crocuses can imitate human speech and learn the names of men to attract them. Once the people are lured into the special creature's trap, it pounces on them and eats them, because yeah, it's a genuine creature, a beast, that would be very deadly to men. It can also do this to dogs as well. And on top of that, it knows magics that can halt any animal that it gazes at three times. So, very dangerous creature, very deadly stuff, and intelligent for a beast as strong as it would be. So, so yeah, not something you'd want to find in the wild. But next up, we have the Sphinx. And it was a creature that likes to ask people riddles, like, which is the creature that has one voice, but has four feet in the morning, two feet in the afternoon, and three at night? Any ideas as to what the riddle's answer is? Well, if you guessed anything but a man, then you would be eaten by a sphinx, because, uh, well, because that's how it works. And if you're wondering how a man ends up being the answer to the riddle, well, the man crawls on all fours as a baby, walks on two feet during the prime and middle sort of periods of their lives, and as an elderly person, they might need a walking stick to get about. So there's where the free legs come from, free feet come from. The Sphinx itself was a creature with a woman's head and a lion's body, a snake for a tail, and eagle's wings in Greek mythology at least. It was also pretty big, so yeah, get one of those riddles wrong and you're probably going to have a very painful death as it's lunch or breakfast or dinner, depending on what time of day you show up. Typically this went down near or in Thebes, so yeah. And also there was a second riddle, just in case you got the first one correct, because, you know, Sphinx can be hungry. I suppose it didn't go that hungry, considering the fact that it was quite famous for eating people, so yes. But the second riddle goes, there are two sisters. One gives birth to the other. Who, in turn, gives birth to the first? Who are they? You can pause the video if you feel like answering that, but if you answered anything but day and night, then you would be food. But if you end up answering both of these riddles correctly, the Sphinx ends up ending its life, defeating itself in some way, perhaps throwing itself off of a cliff or something like that. So in the game itself, you actually have the option to figure out its riddles and you know, challenge it and beat it that way, in which case if you do beat the riddles, then it will sort of play its defeated cutscene and you can get the item that you came for. Or apparently you can have the option to try and challenge it, you know, with your fists. Though most people seem to go for the riddle, which I guess is, is a good thing, maybe, perhaps. If you fail the riddles, or perhaps even pick the other option, the Sphinx might just, well, do this. Huh. Like those who came before, you have failed. Next up we have the Lycian Wolf. King Lycan of Arcadia had a habit of feeding people to people through his Lycan games. Or it might have been that he was a bit of an overly eager fanatic and really wanted to worship Zeus better than anyone else, so he just offered him so many sacrifices, and among those sacrifices were people. He also built a lot of temples to Zeus. Zeus became suspicious of the king and disguised himself as a stranger to enter the city. Now, he eventually gained popularity, which gained the king's attention, and he was invited to have a meal with the king. And the king had one of his sons prepared for the stranger, either Nyctimus, his actual son, or another child in his family called Arcus. Now, Zeus immediately realizes that this is a kid that's being served to him and is very angry and turns King Lycan into a werewolf. Hence why you fight a wolf or werewolf in Assassin's Creed for that quest. 
You might actually be killing a king, but yes. The boy who isn't served up as food for Zeus might actually go on to become the king. I suppose in Assassin's Creed Odyssey that could be the backstory of the wolf, or it could simply just be that, well, it just got that name because it's a pretty powerful wolf. A boss wolf, if you will. But the game doesn't expand on that too much, so yeah. Next up we have the Cyclopses. Creators of the universe! Outstretch your mighty hands and raise me to the heavens! Specifically Brontes, but we'll talk about all of them. This one tried to free his brothers and the Titans when they were trapped in Tartarus by Uranus, their father. So they help Cronus free the Titans and the Cyclopses, and then Cronus just imprisons all the Cyclopses in Tartarus again. So this leads the Cyclopses to help Zeus in some way by giving Zeus the lightning bolts, his weapons. They also make a helmet for Hades that provides invisibility, and a trident for Poseidon that, well, is very useful for Poseidon. Of course, this happens after Zeus frees them from Tartarus. Later, Zeus ends up executing a son of Apollo, Asclepius, because he was dabbling in a bit of black magic, you know, necromancy, reviving the dead and all of that, and Zeus didn't like that. So he punishes him with a lightning bolt, and Asclepius dies, and Apollo is pretty unhappy with this, so he goes to the Cyclopses and murders them because they created Zeus's weapon, so yeah. And of course, it wasn't like Apollo was going to just go to his dad and try to challenge him, because that probably wouldn't end well for him. But yes, that was more or less the video. I hope that you enjoy. If you did, go ahead and leave a like, and of course, subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. And tell me, out of all the creatures in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which mythological creatures are your favorite to see? Or of the ones that didn't make it into the game, so far as you know, which ones do you hope will either make it in this DLC, or which one do you think they should have added? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And until the next video, have a very good day. I've been Prime, and I'll see you guys in the next one.